Many people assume that ancient astronaut theories are nothing more than modern pseudoscience, holding no credence within reality. However, this is a mistake. The idea of ancient visitors from other planets in distant galaxies has been around since the beginning of human history. Although the theory has undoubtedly gained tremendous popularity over the past few decades, nearly every ancient tribe and civilization found on Earth, regardless of geographical location, have a story regarding visitors from other planets. Our choice of the most compelling would have to be that of the Dogons in Africa, one of the oldest surviving tribes on Earth. They not only have a legend which tells of alien visitors, but they retained invaluable data, reliable knowledge which was passed down from generation to generation. Details surrounding their ancient visitors' home solar system Details that at the time, modern civilization had yet to discover. Known as the Nomo, the Dogon tell of giant reptilians who had traveled here from a small sister star of Sirius, a star with a 40-year orbit that the Dogon still celebrate every 40 years. What is remarkable about their claims, however, is the details they give regarding the Sirius system and indeed the Nomo's home star a tiny star which our modern telescopes did not confirm the existence of until several years after the first cataloguing of this information. Another strange reaction to these remarkable experiences within these ancient cultures is a wanting to replicate the appearance of these entities. These interplanetary visitors often brought gifts in the form of knowledge. Due to these revelations, many of our ancestors have perceived these beings as godlike. The teaching of agriculture, the gift of hops, cannabis. The Dogon state that hemp was a gift from the Nomo. Indeed, the dog star is the source of the plant's name. Even strawberries, among many other living things, and ingenious techniques of managing such, have been said throughout antiquity, indeed throughout the world's cultures, to have first arrived here on Earth in the form of gifts from these beings. The Dogu, Dogu meaning clay figure, could be seen as commemorative creations in memory of such entities visiting our planet in the past. Made during the late Jomon period over 10,000 years ago, made with such tremendous skill and artistic accuracy, you have to wonder if these were not created with the purpose of remembering a detailed image of our guests' appearances, then what else were they created for? Or more specifically, to look like? Interestingly, some of the figures appear to have been deliberately created missing limbs, resting on intricately made crutches. Was this done with a likeness to real beings, possibly battle-scarred from previous more hostile encounters? The Incas, Mayans, Aztecs, Dogons, indeed anywhere you look within antiquity, you will inevitably be confronted with fantastic tales of ancient visitors. Even detailed knowledge of things so far out, we cannot even confirm if what they say is true. With so many similar legends found all across the world regarding ancient astronauts, it's safe to say the truth is out there. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash and that the U.S. government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse-engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of U.S. government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. 
For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the U.S. government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling. On April the 17th, 1897, an incredible event would occur in a small farm within Aurora, Texas. According to the locals, an alien craft came streaking down towards their farmhouse before dramatically crashing through a windmill and into a nearby field. The incident, now known as the Aurora UFO incident, was strangely similar to the Roswell crash. The people who lived on this extremely remote farm would actually discover alien corpses within the alien wreckage. On the 19th of April, 1897, Dallas Morning News, written by Aurora resident S. E. Hayden, alleged that the UFO is said to have hit a windmill on the property of a judge, J. S. Proctor, two days earlier at around 6 a.m., resulting in its crash. A pilot, who was reported to have been not of this world and Martian-looking, according to a reported Army officer from nearby Fort Worth, did not survive the crash, subsequently buried with Christian rites at the nearby Aurora Cemetery. And the cemetery does indeed contain a Texas Historical Commission marker mentioning the incident. Reportedly, wreckage from the crash site was dumped into a nearby well, while some ended up with the alien in the grave. Adding to the mystery was the story of Mr. Brawley Oates, who purchased Judge Proctor's property around 1935. Oates cleaned out the debris from the well in order to use it as a water source, but later developed an extremely severe case of arthritis. He later claimed that he was convinced it to have been a result of the contaminated alien water. However, not only is there clearly extremely compelling details here, some of which clearly need to be investigated further, there is also the site of an alien grave. On December 2, 2005, UFO Files undertook an investigation related to the incident, titled Texas's Roswell. Their episode featured a 1973 investigation led by Bill Case, an aviation writer for the Dallas Times-Herald and the Texas State Director of Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. MUFON investigated the Aurora Cemetery. They discovered a rather peculiar stone that was, in fact, a headstone, which depicts an alien craft. This stone signifies the resting place of what most of the town are convinced was an alien being. The team received very strange readings from metal detectors when exploring the grave. MUFON asked for permission to exhume the site, but the cemetery association declined permission. After the MUFON investigation, the marker mysteriously disappeared from the cemetery, and a 3-inch pipe was placed into the ground. 
MUFON's metal detectors no longer picked up the strange metal readings from the grave. Thus, it is now largely presumed that the artifacts, along with remains, have been secretly removed from the grave. MUFON's report eventually stated that the evidence was inconclusive, but did not rule out the possibility of that strange event actually occurring on the night of 1897. Although the cemetery associations still do not permit exhumation, ground-penetrating radar has been used on the grave. However, the condition has badly deteriorated, and the radar was not able to conclusively prove what's still there. Could there really have once been an alien buried in this small corner of Aurora? Sadly, we may never know for sure. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash, and that the US government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of US government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos, these events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggest. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the US government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling.